Hello everyone from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. This is the 65th message in a row during the shutdown. We're studying 2 Timothy and chapter 2 and verse 14. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of hearers. So the reminder to the church uh, for Timothy to tell disciples in the church to give them a charge or an order uh, in God's presence not to argue or dispute about words. It's a useless practice and leads to the ruin of the hearers. So we can't take words and fight over them. This is a common thing. Even in the body of Christ today, people try to argue their points, tearing certain words apart, going to the Greek, going to the Hebrew, instead of taking the message in the context of the scripture and in the context of where it was written and how it was written, they try to prove something beyond what's written by arguing about words. But Paul says that's useless and it ruins people. Verse 15, be diligent to present yourself Approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Men of God must work hard, be diligent, to be approved of the Lord as a worker who, who preaches and teaches the word of God. We, don't, we never want to be ashamed in the presence of God because we were not accurate with the word of God, or we, we went off in some uh, rabbit trail that is not in the scripture when we're teaching the word of God. Verse 16, but avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. So if we talk about worldly things, empty things that have no substance according to the word of God, according to the will of God, we are just going to lead people down a path of more ungodliness, not spirituality in Christ, but more worldliness. We need to avoid that kind of talk. Verse 17, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus. So again, Paul calls out a couple of brothers who had fallen into sin and obviously hadn't repented because now Paul is naming them publicly as a rebuke and warning the people about them and what they did. Uh, obviously, they were caught up in some talking and worldly talk, empty chatter, as Paul calls it, who were uh, wrangling about words. Verse 18, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place, and they upset the faith of some. So these two men, Hymenaeus and Philetus, who must have been some kind of church leaders, they started teaching that the Lord had already, already returned, the resurrection had already taken place. And people were very upset, and you can see why, because they're still here without a resurrection, and that would completely confuse people. So Paul calls them out publicly to Timothy for him to warn the people about Hymenaeus and Philetus, because they were caught up in worldly talk, worldly chatter, wrangling about words that has no profit for the kingdom of God but only produces further ungodliness. Verse 19, 
Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows who are his, and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. So Paul points out what he calls a firm foundation of God and the seal of God that says, the Lord knows who are his. He absolutely does. He knows the faithful ones. He knows the fruitful ones. And also that everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. If you if you are his, if you are the Lord's disciple, you must abstain from wickedness. This is a firm foundation that, that Paul uh, declares and uh, it must have been a very important doctrine and is an important doctrine for us, a teaching that the Lord knows us and we need to prove that by abstaining from wickedness. Verse 20, now in a large house there are not only gold and silver vessels but also vessels of wood and of earthenware and some to honor and some to dishonor. So Paul begins to speak metaphorically about the kind of vessels that people are, individual vessels, and he uses the example of a house with furniture or vessels in it, and he talks about gold and silver vessels, but all, uh, on the other hand, the wood and earthenware. And of course, uh, some are to honor. That would rep be represented by the gold and silver. And to dishonor would be represented by the wood and the earthenware. More common, more common materials for more common purposes. Paul uses a similar illustration in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 3 where he talks about building on the foundation of Jesus Christ as a workman using either gold, silver, and precious stones or wood, hay, and straw. And he makes the same comparison that the only materials that will build the kingdom are eternal materials that, that can pass through the fire without being destroyed like gold, silver, and precious stones. But the wood and the hay and the straw will not pass the test of the fire, the all-consuming fire at the judgment of God. So he's using a similar illustration here. Verse 21, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. So we need to cleanse ourselves from the the dishonorable behavior represented by the wood and earthenware in the, as vessels in the house. And we need to get rid of those things to become a vessel for honor. Vessel for honor. There was an old song, I want to be a vessel of honor for God. It's these vessels of honor, the gold and silver vessels, are set apart for a special purpose. They're sanctified. They are useful to the master and prepared for good work, not for common use, but for good work. Verse 22. Now flee from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. The continual reminder to run away from the lust of the flesh is throughout all the teaching of the New Testament apostles. We see the need to run away from the lust of the flesh. This is our part in walking in righteousness is to say no to our lust of the human nature. You have to say no to your lust before you can pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So in order to walk in the Spirit, 
to to pursue righteousness and faith and love and peace. These are all fruit of the Spirit. And these are all the fruit of those who call on the Lord from a pure, a pure heart. So first, we have to flee our carnal nature. Say no to the flesh in order to say yes to the Lord. This is the standard of teaching throughout the Bible. And we want to be vessels of honor. We don't want to be worldly and carnal vessels. So we must flee the lust of the flesh, even as we pursue the will of God through the fruit of the Spirit, through obedience to His Word. Because everyone who calls on the Lord from a pure heart functions this way. Verse 23, But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. There's so much foolish and ignorant speculation going on in the body of Christ. You see it all the time. You know, you read you read so-called prophecies and so-called visions that people claim they've had and you all you have to do is test it according to the scripture and if it fails the test or contradicts the scripture then reject reject that as as not something from the Lord not genuine revelation from God, but instead it would fall in the category of foolish and ignorant speculations. And these things produce not peace and encouragement or up, uplifting experiences in the body of Christ, but they produce quarrels. People end up fighting over that. Anywhere you see quarreling, it is the work of the flesh. It's the wisdom of the world and not the the move of the Spirit upon those people. When you're quarreling with people about foolish and ignorant speculation, that is worldly. It's carnal. Verse 24, the Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to, to all, able to teach, patient when wrong. So the one who is the serve of the Lord, a bondservant, willingly laying down their lives for the will of God to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, that servant must not quarrel, must not be quarrelsome, must not get engaged in foolish and ignorant speculation. But instead, the servant of God should be kind to everyone, able to teach, patient when wrong. So being kind, always being kind, even when you're faced with someone who disagrees with you. And we need to be able to teach, which means we should be able to teach them the right way, the truth, God's word. And even when we're wronged, we should be patient. Verse 25, with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. So when someone brings up something foolish and ignorant and contradicts the teaching of the Word of God that we are bringing, we need to be gentle with them and correct them. You see that? Be gentle yet correct. This is what a man of God should do. And, and with the view or, or the hope that the people who are opposing you will receive the kindness of the Lord to lead them to repentance. Did you know that? It's the kindness of God. This is Romans chapter 2, verse 4. The kindness of the Lord leads a person to repentance. It's a it's a revelation from God to that person convicting them of their, their wrong thinking of their sin so that they might repent by grace and faith. So the truth is what we're after. And we, we even deal with those who oppose us gently, hoping that God will lead them to repentance and the truth. Verse 26, And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil 
having been held captive by him to do his will. So when someone's caught up in wrangling about words, causing division, foolish and ignorant speculations that that spread like gangrene, you know, gangrene spreads, it's a horrible infection. And without, uh, without severe measures in the old times, the only the only way they could deal with it was to cut off the limb that was full of uh, gangrene. Today, antibiotics could stop that infection. But unless you stop that infection, it will destroy the person. And that's how, how damaging these foolish and ignorant speculations and false teachings can be. But we have to correct these people and hoping that they will repent because like verse 26 says, when a person repents, they come to their senses like the prodigal. Remember the prodigal son? He ran off with all of his inheritance and wasted it in wickedness. And when he was all, when his money was all gone and he was starving, even though he was a, a slave to a farmer feeding the pigs, he, he even longed to eat some of their food, but he couldn't get any of it. So he, the Bible says he came to his senses and went back and repented to his father. And you know that story very well. And the father received him based upon his repentance and his return, returning to the father. And this is what it means to come to your senses. When you come to your senses in repentance and stop thinking in this in this foolish and ignorant way, you, you will escape the devil's snare. You have been held captive by the devil to do his will. You've been enslaved by the wickedness of that uh, antichrist thinking, that foolish and ignorant speculation, and you need to repent. So by, by coming back, in repentance, you will find the way out of that snare. How can we apply this teaching today at the end of Second Timothy chapter 2? Well, we know, we know that there's a real danger about arguing about foolish things, fighting over words that ruins people, that defiles people. Uh, leads them to ungodliness with worldly and empty chatter and spreads like gangrene. And those who end up doing this need to be called out. If they won't repent, they need to be exposed as, as false teachers and not embraced by the body of Christ because the Lord knows who are His and we prove that we are His by abstaining, avoiding wickedness. We want to be a vessel of honor for God. We want to, to be those who the Lord uses to glorify his name, not those who are caught up in foolish and ignorant speculation and quarreling with, quarreling with people. We must be gentle with those who oppose us, teach them correctly, trusting the Lord to lead them to repentance, that they would come out from the deception of the devil. Let's pray together. Father, we ask you to apply this word to each of our individual lives and to the church, the body of Christ. Lord, we want to be vessels of honor for you, to glorify you by proving with good fruit that we are yours, that we abstain from wickedness, from foolishness, and ignorant speculations, and instead we produce godly fruit. And even those who oppose us, Lord, may we have the grace to be gentle with them and to teach them correctly so that they would have an opportunity to repent by the grace of God. So, Lord, help us to apply this teaching individually and corporately as the church for your glory and honor. We ask it in Jesus' name. And, Lord, now we pray that you would take everyone who is studying the Word of God with us and bless them and keep them safe and strong 
and deliver from all sickness. Any who are sick, we pray for your healing power to raise them up, that they might continue serving you. We're trusting you, Father, that your kingdom would come, that your will be done in our lives here on earth as it's being done in heaven. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, please share these videos. There aren't too many people viewing them. Uh, maybe every day is too much for some. But I hope to leave these teachings even for the future so people can study the word verse by verse and be encouraged and grow in maturity in Christ. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Be well and safe. And we'll see you tomorrow.